Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bullish or Bearish. My name is Tony Chu. I'm here with my sister, Angela, and we're here from Success Options Group. And uh, we're bringing you another episode. So we're talking about some of the hotter financial topics that are that you might be seeing in social media or on YouTube or whatever, right? And uh, we have another great episode for you today. Angela? Okay. So like Tony said, what we're doing is we're giving you two sides, you know, of the same, like, about a topic. And what we're really talking about today is we're going to talk about hedging. Now, you might ask, what the heck are you talking about? Well, hedging is a specific term in finance that describes, you know, safeguarding your portfolio or your position. And it's really kind of like how you reduce risk in like an investment. So I'm going to be talking about why you want to hedge. So really, it all goes back to what hedging is. The whole point is it helps you reduce risk in your portfolio, in your investment. And that means that, you know, you have less risk of losing your money. You, you know, it's safer. I mean, that's just really what hedging is for, is to make things safer and less risky. So, okay. I hear you say make it safer and less risky. I call that a waste of money. So you are, I think you'll talk about this in a little bit, but in some respects, you are paying for safety, right? And the biggest example, usually we, we kind of allude to it as like more like insurance, and it's a waste of money because most of the time, just like your car insurance, you don't use it. You just it kind of just fritters away. Okay, so that's exactly what I was going to bring up next, that it was going to be like insurance. Now, think about it this way. Okay, I live in California, right? So even though you hope that the wildfire never comes near your house, the fact is that these things happen sometimes. And I've been evacuated from my house because of a fire warning before out of the middle of nowhere. So, I mean, do you want to pay for the insurance in case something like a fire happens? Or do you want to just hope that you, you're never going to get hit, that you're never going to have, you know, a fire happen near you? You know, that's the whole purpose of buying insurance is it helps you like, in a sense, it saves you when something totally unexpected like happens that would negative, like totally wipe you out. Like something catastrophic happens that would totally wipe out your account. If you've hedged, that won't happen to you. You know what I mean? Because you've, in a sense, bought insurance against it wiping you out. Okay. So what you're describing, though, like, like how much of your portfolio are you actually going to spend on insurance, right? How much money are you going to waste on these premiums, in a sense? And you know, we talk a lot about this in workshops and our private sessions about, you know, the one of the strategies we talk about the most is buying puts, right? So you're buying that insurance in case of a, a downturn in your stock. And that can get expensive, right? Like I could, <laughs> you could spend like so much of your account trying to hedge to buy insurance for an event that never happens. Whereas why don't you just have a plan? Like Andrew, you talked about this before. Why don't you just have a plan? and get out when you hit certain markers. Just have a plan. Well, so, okay, yes, you have to have a plan. But the thing is, that doesn't mean that hedging can't be part of the plan. I'm not saying they have to use your entire portfolio and put it all into hedging. That's completely stupid. I mean, you don't do that for anything. Even when you're doing, when, even if you're not hedging at all, it's not like you put all of your investment into one basket. I mean, you don't like put everything into a high risk, you know, possibility or speculation because, it's really risky. I mean, that's part of planning. It's like, well, how much can I put into like high risk? How much into like medium risk? How much into low risk? And maybe how much into hedging? You know, that's a part of like making the decision for yourself is do I want to buy some insurance? Because what you might do is you might just, you might balance it. Okay, I have 10% of my portfolio in high risk speculation. Well, why don't I hedge for that 10%? You know, the most risky part to reduce my risk in that why don't I hedge for that part? I mean, that's what it means to use it like smart, like use it the right way in the sense is choose what you want to hedge, you know, choose how you're going to use it so that it's the most beneficial for you. while not in the sense, like Tony was saying, wasting money. So, I mean, the other thing you hear about in hedging, right. And just in the marketplace and social media is like, you know, there, there's historical hedges, right. So you might buy gold or, um, because you think the inflation is up, right? Because that's a, a good hedge against the US dollar being less valuable. 
Or the other ones is like when stocks go down, usually bonds go up, right? These are the historical hedges. And people are all like kind of making correlations. And the issue with that is what if you know nothing about bonds? What if you know nothing about gold? Are you really gonna do this kind of hedging stuff? So you're talking about specific ones. That's not the only way to hedge. There are a lot of different strategies on how to hedge. I mean, you can use different things to hedge. All you need to do is have something that negatively correlates with whatever you're trying to hedge for. So if your risky stock that you're trying to, you know, buy a hedge or buy insurance for typically acts in a specific manner, you just need to find something that acts in an opposite manner to hedge against it, you know? It doesn't have to be like Tony said, you're the historical gold or historical, you know, you can pick something you know about, you know, and use that. So it's like, it's not like you're you're restricted to any specific thing. Hedging can be used in a lot of different ways, as long as you get the education, as long as you know what you're doing. And I mean, that's why we push so much coming to workshops or at least getting some education or doing one of our programs, because it's not about whether or not you have to do anything. It's really about, well, is this going to be a want the right thing for you to do for a specific situation, for your financial situation? Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, we talk mostly about the stock market here, right? So, and like, you know, we talk a lot of option kind of strategies, strategies, right? And, you know, we go into the, a lot more depth on, in the workshop, but like market makers and there's dynamic hedging and there's delta hedging. But it's... <laughs> I don't know. I still go back to it. it's a waste of money, right? Sometimes. And you're just putting good after bad, or I mean, bad after good, right? It's, or whatever, you know, you're just, you're putting in more. So like you take up your position, let's say it's 1% of your account. And then it starts going the wrong way on you. And now you are like, well, maybe I should do some hedging. Like, you know, I should buy some shares to hedge my options contract. Well, are you just throwing more money after something that's a, a lost position, right? Why don't you just close the position, right? And, you know, it's a loss. Take it as a loss and move forward. That's why you, you have a strategy in your portfolio where not everything's all in one bucket. Like it's not all your eggs in one basket kind of concept, right? Yes, but that's specifically for one stock. Hedging is not necessarily just for one stock. It can be to hedge against your entire portfolio as well. Like buying insurance in case the entire market drops, you know, and it helps protect so that you don't lose as much. I mean, it helps you protect against things like, you know, commodity price changes, inflation, like currency exchange, like, like changes, that, like interest rate changes, like all of these things that can happen that, you know, that you cannot control that just happen because of the economy. Like hedging protects against all of those things. So well said. Uh, make sure you know you guys hit the like, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, you get a different viewpoint on both sides of what hedging can mean for you and your portfolio. Uh, make sure to sign up for a workshop if you're interested. And you know, we'll see you next time.